It's uh, unbelievable. There is a staggering amount of microorganisms. You mentioned the number. There are more than 2,000 uh, microorganisms on 20 phones. And basically, it's actually equivalent to have uh, here uh, uh, really a mountain of those uh, microbes. Uh, just to break down this number, there were 1,229 viruses, 882 bacteria, uh, 88 fungi, and five protozoa. Wow. Okay. So with the doctor's phones that you swabbed just at random, the 20 that you, you, you looked at, what sort of bacteria and, and microbes were on there and how damaging could they be if they were to you know, let loose and proliferate amongst the community? Look, it was a combination of everything. First of all, obviously, there was the microbiota of the owners of this mobile phone. But on top of that, there were obviously all the pathogenic uh, bacteria, pathogenic viruses that indeed are a concern for biosecurity, but also, by the way, to the public health. Uh, I give you some example. We obviously found fecal-derived uh, microorganism. What does it mean is that people use mobile phones in the toilet. So you can understand that it could be obviously a foodborne issue here. Uh, on top of that, as I said we found uh, different microorganisms that were plant pathogens animal pathogens which brings a biosecurity concern i give you an example we found a bacteria called pontea stewati which is a big issue for a crop but on top of that is actually a bacteria that can lead to septicemia to a very rare type of uh, parrot the western ground parrot and guess what there is only 150 of those all around the world so yeah, you can wow. understand there is a biosecurity concern here. So how is it then that these microbes are being able to survive and it sounds like thrive on these mobile phones? I mean, they're not petri dishes, they're not organisms, they're, they're in inorganic objects. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the problem with mobile phones is that you can consider those as our third hand. Why? Because we actually use them thousands of times a day. Uh, there are studies that show that we're actually using them between three and five hours. What does it mean? They are always with us. They are our third hands. The problem with that is that they negate hand washing. So you can actually wash your hands as many times as you want. If you touch a mobile phone, you cross contaminate your hands all over again on hard that has absolutely amazing amount of problems and consequences. Look at the medical setting, for example. If medical doctors are not aware that mobile phones are indeed contaminated with microbes, they will cross-contaminate the two, two biological hands and they, they, they need then sorry, to handle patients which are immunocompromised. So you can understand here the equation. Mm, mm. With respect to, to biosecurity, we know that we have here in Australia very strict conditions when you're bringing in either plants or, or foods that are allowed to or not allowed to come in. We know that often feet have to be, uh, shoes have to be more uh, 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 impacted differently if they've been in farming areas. What do you think would help with protocol around the germs that are being brought in on phones at airports? Uh, look, uh, at the end of the day, the study really showed that international travellers come up with plant pathogens, animal pathogens, as I said to you as well, human pathogens. Uh, the matter of the fact is uh, the, the, the customs, or at least the biosecurity officers there, uh, should really ask themselves a question. If we stop people uh, f to bring, for example, sandwiches or cheese from overseas, which is the right thing to do, by the way, we obviously need to protect our country from invasive species, but also mobile phones are, as I said to you, petri dishes. Why? Because they got all the conditions of the world to actually accommodate. I call them, by the way, five-star accommodation hotel platforms. Why? When I talk over my phone, for example, I will spit a little bit of saliva. It gives moisture for the microorganism, so they thrive in that kind of condition. Secondly, if I keep my mobile phone in my pocket, obviously there is some temperature control. When I switch them on, you give the right temperature for those microorganisms to multiply. Uh, thirdly, uh, when you eat with your mobile phone, which I'm sure you've been eating your mobile phone probably this morning, uh, your <laughs> breakfast, you actually drop indeed some particular nutrients. So you give, actually, you feed those microorganisms. And the problem is that we're actually using those mobile phones thousands of times a day, mm. high touch surfaces, and we accommodate those microorganisms. So back to the biosecurity, back to what we need to do in the airport, we really need to take that seriously. We need to sanitize the mobile phone. And I really do think that there is an amazing solution out of it. The, I think the solutions of the future are obviously technology driven and there are some ultraviolet C phone sanitizers that are around that can zap the surface of the mobile phones in 10 seconds. Okay. Very practical. So sorry, what was that, an ultraviolet C sanitizer? What is that? 
So this is UVC light that uh, will radiate and will penetrate through, uh, let's say, the cells of the microorganism, uh, make damage to their DNA and prevent them from surviving. And obviously, you are actually going to kill them. That is really good because, as I said to you, that will actually get uh, people to comply to it. It will take only 10 seconds. And I'll give you an example of the practicality of it. Look, our medical staff are extremely busy. They are very compliant to hand hygiene, mm. uh, but they don't probably understand that mobile phones actually cross-contaminate their hands all over again. Imagine now having next to a sink uh, the, the possibility to have such device, UVC device, that decontaminate the mobile phones in 10 seconds. You wash your hands, uh, which by the way takes around 20 seconds, Three hands are sanitized and you can obviously treat your patients with the safest way mm -hmm. ever. And just finally and briefly, uh, Lottie, what about ordinary people? How should we keep our phones uh, cleaner than what they currently are? So you can obviously be aware of the issue. That's a good start. Uh, another advice, by the way, don't use a mobile phone in the toilets. That would be a really good advice to do. <laughs> so many people uh, and do, though. You... We've seen the stats on all the surveys. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, really, uh, and coming back to some professional, the medical staff actually admit uh, to use mobile phone, 52% of them in the toilet. So you bring about uh, another level of, of problem, problematics, sorry, uh, problem, sorry. And uh, back again to your question, uh, I would suggest that people take some Kim, Kim wipes, uh, put a very little drop of alcohol and wipe it off. But please do it not roughly, uh, otherwise you will damage the surface of your mobile phone, especially uh, a particular layer called oleophobic layer so you don't want to dare touch that particular layer otherwise you are going to miss out with your digital experience and you might lose your phone which i did uh, at the, probably three or four years ago i tried to put hand sanitizer and clean it really roughly i lost my phone unfortunately